I think I might need you to take me to the hospital. I was like, why? It's like, I've been having this intense chest pain, these like shooting pains, this aching pain, right through the middle into, into my back and then up my arm, kind of in my neck. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Well, 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 what up world? Back with another one today. And you can see, it's just gonna be a simple, huge pile of fried chicken. I am very, very excited about this. There's something about just keeping it simple and eating one food and not like switching around, doing too much, like doing, being too extra with it. I like, I just love like keeping it to one style of food. I don't know why, but I do. For those who like the pour up, I've unfortunately already poured up because I couldn't wait. I had to get a sip of the Diet Pepsi. And then we got some cherry sauce here. And I wanted you guys to see this moment because come on. This is the a pour up of its own that's just, you know, it's a necessary moment for you guys to witness. So this is cherry sauce. I love it. It's like a sweet and sour in a sense, but just a little more, I guess, on the sweet side. But I love the red glow of it. So, so good. All right, I've got my bib. I'm dainty and proper. Okay, I'm so, so hungry. I'm like 22 hours fasted. This is, just looks incredible to me. It's actually from my local grocery store. Um, and to be honest, it looks like crazy good. Like it looks Popeye's level. It looks better than KFC in my opinion. Because uh, KFC in Canada slacks. Anyhow, uh, before we do anything else, I just want to say a quick shout out to Natalie A, Sean C, Barb D, and myself for ordering merch. I have a limited merch campaign. I think it's going nine more days, but we got hoodies, tees, crewnecks, and uh, long sleeve like this shirts. And uh, I say they're pretty dope, got different colorways, and the company is really good and reliable. So if you feel like gearing up for the cold weather or holiday season, what have you, uh, maybe there's somebody's birthday coming up. I don't know, but yeah, if you feel like it grab one uh, But big shout out to you guys for grabbing. I really really appreciate the support uh, And of course we have a new addition the okay I just want to dedicate this to one subscriber named Daniel Lowe He has for the last six months. I would say or longer Commented okay. Okay. Okay on all like all my videos so Daniel Lowe, shout out to you. I'm hoping to see an okay under, uh, in the comments on this video. But let's get into this because I am jacked to eat this. Okay, so how should we start? I just want to kind of get it a little bit laid out. But uh, is there like a breast piece? I love the breast piece. Breast piece is the best piece. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a problem right now. Not a problem, but a problem. Yep. Mm-hmm. for uh a grocery store chicken mm -mm. they are not playing games That is that good crunch. Good flavor. I'm hype about it. I especially like it because between the drive home and getting this video set up, it's kind of set up like 
It's just not like super piping hot. Like I hate when I'm so fancy to eat fried chicken and then it's like way too steamy hot. And I'm crazy hungry in this in this video. Just BTW, so might get a light light savage side of me. Okay, who's next? Who's next in line? Should we do a wing? Just because I am the wing, the wing god, the wing king. When I was picking out those neon signs, there was like a bunch of different ones with a cactus, a pineapple, one that says like lit. I thought the one, the, the lit one would be too like typical. When I saw the okay, I was like, okay. Okay. Just a very chill term. It's nice to know it's all going to be okay. And on that subject, apparently that's what some of these videos do for you guys is kind of let you know it's going to be okay or make you feel okay for, you know, moments of your life. Which is dope to me. I'm glad I can do that for you. Through the power of, I guess, my personality, but also eating. <laughs> or distracting you through anxious times. Because I did put out that community uh, tab status the other day. Asking like, who's going through the shit right now? You know. Are you facing pain, struggles, challenges? And we all are. But uh, the amount of responses I got and the stories in those responses were not light, to say the least. And a lot of responses as well, which was like kind of overwhelming to me because I was like holy crap like man people are out there dealing with some real shit and some people's stories are just insane compared to to others and I've been through some shit too, you know, from the very beginning of my life and then also all throughout and then more recently just shit's been kind of hitting the fan a little bit, so I've never been one of these types of people who you know those people that like write in the status or like they're like oh 2018 kicked my ass 
Like I've never thought and looked at a year. I've never looked at a year and thought like, damn, that year handed my ass to me. But 2018, 2019, like I can honestly say it was life was handing it to me. In many different ways. And uh, it's just, yeah, it gets tough. Like, it gets very discouraging. You know? Sometimes it's hard to stay motivated. Hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Hard to see the, the why. In it all. It's easy to go dark and be like, well, what's the point? Like, and I certainly know those feelings. Just what's your purpose, existential dread, things like that. And then also the actual just. On top of all that, like the fucked up health things happening to either you or family, or maybe like your dad passes away or whatever, like it all piles up sometimes. And yeah, sometimes when it rains, it pours, right? And in those moments, those are the times you gotta be like, ready to do battle because it is a battle and your head your, your your brain can be a scary place even though it's kind of, it kind of lies to you a lot but it can be a scary place if everything's stacking on you right If the pressure's getting too great, issue after issue, where's the straw that breaks the camel's back? So, in those moments, what I try to at least do or have learned is that, like, yin, like peaks and valleys, ebb and flow, like, it won't be forever. It will start to repair itself or rectify itself. And you will, again get back to a a thriving state or a predominantly happy state or a predominantly healthy state life is very much like the tides in and out And you know what was crazy was I think it was on that very same day where I read through the post I read everybody's stories and was like wow the very same day My dad came, and I was supposed to go do something with him, and he showed up and he was like, he was like, I think I might need you to take me to the hospital. I was like, why? He's like, I've been having this intense chest pain, these like shooting pains, this aching pain, right through the middle into, into my back and then up my arm, kind of in my neck. And uh, he said it woke him up at four in the morning. It was now five p.m. dinner time, 
like I said, you've been dealing with it all day, but you just kind of been, been being stubborn about it, seeing if it would go away. You know, my dad's getting older now too. And he's been a heavy smoker his, uh, his entire life. And, uh, but he's in good physical shape. He's always been a guy who like keeps it moving. He works on his feet. You know, he used to do triathlons and run and ride dirt bikes. And like, he gets his exercise. He's always moving. Like he's just, he's one of those old school dudes, just a working dude. His dad was a doctor too, so, you know, his dad was always like, you don't go to the hospital unless you're dying, kind of, kind of thing. So my dad's pretty, like, hard-headed and tough like that. So for him to actually admit, like, I gotta go to the hospital, I was like, okay, well, this is probably pretty serious, so. Signs and symptoms of a heart attack, so <clears throat> I drove him. And then was there with him for like five, six hours. They did all the tests on him. Everything came back good. They gave him like this crazy strong, strong uh, like shot for like acid reflux and, and gas and stuff like that. And oddly enough, that really, really helped him. So. He also just got out of a neck brace. He's in a neck brace for 14 weeks because he crashes dirt bike. He broke his T1 vertebrae. Almost was a quadra. Plegic. And he had a flail ribs. So it's like when they both break and separate. And you run the risk of puncturing your lung. Anyways, he was in hospital in the summertime for two weeks or so. And then he's in this neck brace for 14 weeks. And uh, he had, he's just gotten it off and he's kind of pushing himself too quick. So I guess that's where like, the sharp pain was coming from. But like, I guess the acid reflux mixed with that sharp pain led him to believe like, you know, could be having a cardiac event here. So, and then it was just in those moments, like I, I had just read those posts Of like traumatic life shit and then boom an event is happening to me in my life where I'm like am I gonna have to like watch my dad go through some wild shit right now is he gonna have to go in for surgery like And there's something just so not chill about seeing like fear on your dad's face. Relative to his his potential demise. Especially when his whole life you've looked up to him as like you know, the hard, tough guy the dad superhero status like dad that can get through anything for me to have to drive him to the hospital and, and like physically like see the fear in his face and like the discomfort in his body and just that, like the worry on someone who is so actually mentally strong and physically strong and all that shit. It's a weird feeling. It's not chill. And then just being at the hospital and seeing all that and then just looking around and then realizing, like, getting to the age where it's like, yeah, I'm going to start losing people, man. That's going to be weird. Like, And I'm so fortunate in that sense. Like, I, to this point in my life, have not gone through, like, any, like, major 
I don't even want to say it because I don't even want to breathe it into it, like jinx it, but let's just say I've been really fortunate in terms of like having all the people who are my family, like all still good, all still around. This piece of chicken is giving me grief. But yeah, they all still good, all still around. Having full relatively healthy lives because as you get older not everybody just has okay that sucks has perfect health right like everybody's gonna have their little ailments and shit but the other thing too is like I'll talk about this in another video but my mom's been mentally ill since I've known her since she held me in her arms she's been mentally ill so like I grew up with a mother who is like severely mentally ill for a long time. And that's why mental illness to me, especially because I've been through my own type of shit, but I've seen it firsthand, like lived with it, been affected by it firsthand on some like really real shit. Like really real shit. Like he doesn't even know the half of the shit I've seen growing up with my mom. And uh, like mental illness is no fucking joke. And that's why I hate when people like kind of make fun of people who are crazy. It's like, it's not funny at all. <laughs> you have no idea what it's like to have a brain that's like, the wiring in it isn't right or the chemicals of it don't work properly and it like it just tricks you into things you know so yeah it's not chill if you have like your wits about you and everything and you have your health like you just need to be fucking grateful for that shit because it's not guaranteed and it's just no joke like it shouldn't be taken for granted and you shouldn't pass judgment on others who aren't as lucky as you so anyways rant over till the next one you know what to do eat good live well stay true